perennial here in our butterfly garden that gives us a wonderful display this time of the year is this black-eyed Susan. This is Rebecca Goldstrom. And we've had this here in our butterfly garden for about five years now. And it's absolutely spectacular this time of the year. This was once a perennial plant of the year selection. Those flower heads can be from three and a half to five inches across. Well, another neat perennial that's given us some nice color this time of the year is this one. This is leadwort or Serratostigma plumbaginoides. And it is a hardy perennial that works great as a ground cover. It only gets to be about 12 to 18 inches tall, and it slowly spreads to fill in an area. And I absolutely love the blue color of the flowers this time of the year. This is one of those plants that is a true blue rather than a purple. A lot of the plants we see or the flowers that are supposed to have blue flowers, they tend to be a little bit more on the purple side. Leadwort will grow well in an organically amended soil does best with a little bit of extra water in the dry parts of the year and it will perform best as well out in full sun although it will handle some shade now over in another part of our garden we have chinese leadwort serrata stigma wilmontianum and this is more of a typical perennial it gets a look to be a little bit larger it can get to be about three feet tall it's a little more branched and open it's not quite as cold hardy as the other leadwort but it is a little bit more drought tolerant and i think the flowers are a little bit different color blue and they have a pale center well you might have noticed here in this bed of leadwort that we have a really nice crepe myrtle right back here. This is one of the recent introductions from Dr. Carl Whitcomb, former professor of horticulture here at OSU. Now he lives here in Stillwater and does research and develops new crepe myrtle cultivars. This cultivar is called Dynamite and it has really bright red flowers. You can see here some of these crepe paper like petals with that really bright red color. Some people say this is the brightest red introduction of Dr. Whitcomb's crepe myrtles. Now you can see you get a little bit of a bonus coloration when we have some cloudy weather. You see we've got a little bit of white, a little bit of pink. Well this will show up in the dynamite crepe myrtles whenever we have a few days of cloudy weather. If we had a lot of sunny weather this would all be this a really bright red. The dynamite crepe myrtle can grow to be about 20 feet tall, although here in Oklahoma we occasionally get cold enough weather where they're killed back to the ground, so it's easy to keep them as a smaller shrub. The dynamite crepe myrtle has excellent powdery mildew resistance. Well, I've got a few more of Dr. Whitcomb's recent crepe myrtle introductions that I want to show you in the patio garden. Well, the cultivar dynamite may be the brightest red of Dr. Whitcomb's new crepe myrtles, but this one is probably the darkest red. This is known as siren red, and it's very new. But look how dark the color is in the flowers of siren red. It's almost a like burgundy color, and that goes well with the burgundy foliage or the reddish wine red new growth of this plant. This one will stay even smaller than dynamite. This one only gets to about 8 to 10 feet tall. Again, that's a very new Dr. Carl Whitcomb crepe myrtle introduction. Now right over here we have one that's a little bit more familiar to you all. This was our Oklahoma proven shrub last year. This is pink velour crepe myrtle and I think the color of the flowers and the foliage is just incredible. It's so intense. The pinkish flowers and then you get all this dark coloration from the stems, the leaves, the petioles, and the buds and it just gives you a wonderful display in the garden. One really unique thing about Dr. Whitcomb's crepe myrtles is that they don't produce a lot of seed so they just keep flowering. This is the second or third flush of growth on this plant. This one can get to be about 12 feet tall in the south, but again, easy to keep these as smaller shrubs. This one's actually been here in our patio garden for three seasons. 
outstanding plant. Well, another new Dr. Whitcomb crepe myrtle introduction that I'm very excited about is right down here in the corner of our patio garden. I love the combination of color on this plant. This one is known as burgundy cotton. A wonderful mix of color on this crepe myrtle. I love, the, again, the wine red coloration of the stems and the leaves. And then you get the white flowers with traces of pink and the peduncles and different color in the buds and things like that. It's just a, a neat new color, I think, for crepe myrtles. Good powdery mildew resistance and an all-around great plant. Another one that could get to be about 12 foot tall in the south, but again, easy to keep as a small shrub. Well, you might think about adding some of these new crepe myrtles to your landscape, and in the summertime, it's hard to beat crepe myrtles when it comes to flowering shrubs. Mm -hmm.